Hey everybody, welcome back to Graybeard's Garage. Uh, today we're going to be doing the installation of the Serpa winch. Uh, the previous video I did an unboxing and basically an opinion as to what I think about that winch and why I purchased it. If, um, a lot of people have never heard of Sherpa winches, so we'll go ahead and check them out on the web. I said it's Sherpa4x4.com or .au. Either one will get you there. If you go to .com, you'll be able to see the U.S. pricing on them. Uh, they're pretty impressive. There's plenty of videos out there on YouTube that show them testing and installations and actually use from different vehicles. Uh, one guy was even using the uh, larger one, uh, the 25,000 pound winch. Uh, I think it's called the Stallion. And he was pulling, oh, I guess you could say it's probably about a 12 to 15,000 pound military vehicle up at 20 degree grades. So it was pretty awesome. So what I wanted to go over with today before we put this in, is talking about mounting of the winch. Uh, a lot of people aren't aware of it. You know, most of your uh, winch plates that you get, say like for a Jeep, will end up having you just bolt the winch straight up and down like this from the bottom. Well, there's a couple problems with that. When you're bolting from the bottom on the plate, you're pulling forward, which is you're using the strength of the bolts, especially the rear ones here, for shear strength. Because as you're pulling with the winch, this thing is going to be pushing down one way or the other and you're and plus the the pull coming this direction you know towards the winch is a good chance that your bolts can shear off that's your weak point is your bolts so you can't use cheap bolts you need to use grade eight or better uh, for your bolts but actually the strongest way to mount this winch and i'll show you here it actually covers it here in the manual by sherpa if I can get over here to it for you real quick. Let's see, I may have passed it up. Yes, I did. I think it's right here close to the front. I apologize. Let's see here. Uh, da -da 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 -da. I bet I passed it again. These pages like to stick together. Winch operation. So yes, it's definitely up here in the front. Why these pages keep sticking together? All right, bear with me. I do apologize here. Uh, yep, they're sticking together here. There it is. All right. So as you can see, this is how most people would mount their winch. See if we can get the light off of there. Uh, to where your bolts are coming in from the bottom. But uh, because of this. Uh, if you look right here on the front of this winch, there's two extra holes on the front. And basically, if you mount it with the bolts coming through the bottom, uh, that glare, uh, these extra bolts are here in the face to where if your bumper allows you to uh, put those bolts in to give it a little bit more strength than just the bolts here. These bolts can't shear off. And here they tell you straight up, it's recommended. There we go, get rid of that glare a little bit better to mount it with the bolts in a horizontal position. So basically what you would think, this is normally you see a mounted like this with the control box on the brackets, excuse me, they're like this, that clamp on to mount your control box. That's all fine and dandy, but if you really want the full use out of your winch and the full strength, you actually want to flip it on its side and use the mounting holes facing forward. That way all your pull is coming into your plate and not just reliant on these four bolts. So that's a good piece of advice to know there. Uh, that's one reason I like the ARB bumpers. Take you over here and show you that. I went ahead and uh, loosened the bumper up, moved it away from the truck, because I've got to fit this bumper through this gap right here, because the winch actually sits under here to where you can't get the, bumper, uh, the winch out without taking the bumper off. And here we have the four mounting holes we have two down here low and two high. And that's what I'm saying. The base of the winch actually be facing forward. So all this plate here in the bumper is getting the full tension instead of just the bolts. So in theory, if you really wanted to, you know, if you could get it to hold in place, you know, in theory, the winch would hold itself up against the bumper without bolts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set the camera up at a different angle here and I'm going to go ahead and set this winch in and get it bolted up. And then uh, once I get that done, uh, I'll probably just go ahead and time lapse it because you know, anybody knows what like putting four bolts in to a piece of equipment is. 
So I'm going to time lapse that and then we go to hook up the control box. Uh, we'll go back to regular video at that time. All right, so we got the bumper bolted back up, the winch bolted in, we got the fair lead bolted on, the uh, lower bolts for the winch go through the fair lead. The uh, license plate, plate bracket's gonna be kinda nice. I'll be able to put the license plate up here and not have to worry about it being in the way. Right now I'm trying to determine the best place to put my solenoid pack. I think it's probably gonna be right here. You know, I did get the uh, extended wires I don't think I'm going to need them, to be honest with you, but that's okay because I can use them to make a nice heavy set of jumper cables or something out of. Or if I put a winch on my Jeep, I'm thinking about putting the uh, bumper in the back on the Jeep, or excuse me, not the bumper, but the battery in the back on the Jeep. So that would come in handy. So here, as you can see, we've got plenty of room. I've got my positive going over here to my main battery. And here's the negative. So I think I'm going to be able to route it down here, no problem. I'll probably end up having to uh, zip tie these main cables probably right here to this, uh, excuse me, <laughs> so I might be, have to uh, cable uh, zip tie these main cables either here or up against the bumper, probably up against the bumper right here to keep it out of the way of the rope. Uh, I could actually probably come over. I can't put it in the middle. This original where I wanted to put it was in the middle, but then I can't get to the release underneath the grill. I uh, could even move it over a little bit. Let's see if I'd move it over like so. That would keep everything out of the way of the winch. That's my AC condenser. Let's see. I might actually have enough because I can come under here with my cable because I got to be able to clear that all right so this is what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and break my manual out and get all the wires in the right place get them connected up and then uh, from there we'll see where we're gonna put this box out all right here we go got the installation finished up went ahead and got the solenoid all wired up so follow the instructions it's real easy everything is color coded uh, I did end up able to use the stock wires got them routed through here but one thing I've got to do uh, to put the fuse in I need to get a little short cable made up probably about four to six inches long maybe a foot long to put between the battery and this cable because uh, I'd like to have that fuse down here somewhere but right now it's hooked directly to the battery it's not really recommended to do without a fuse, but I know there's thousands, if not more, people out there that hook them directly to the battery. You know how it goes. Uh, redneck engineering, why not? So I got my negative hooked up, my positive hooked up, everything routed where it's safe, not going to rub on anything. The hood still clears. I had to mount my uh, servo off to the left here so I could be able to get in here to release the... Uh, excuse me the hood latch 
I would have loved to have it turned this way, but the way this bar is built, this bar here would be in the way of uh, going in and plugging in that solenoid with my light here. So what I might end up doing is maybe relocating this light or raising it up, and I might end up turning that. But if I turn that, I'm gonna have to end up coming up with a little bit more slack, but that won't be a problem once I uh, get that fuse put in. So my uh, disengagement handle is right here. Uh, it's not that big of a deal. It's not like you're gonna use a winch again and again and again. I can reach underneath, engage or disengage, or just open the hood up, which is right here. You know, I've got plenty of clearance. That was the thing I was worried about, was I gonna have to clock it. And even if I did clock it, it'd be an issue. So I don't have much of a, a choice but to put it here, or if I can, turn it a little bit, but still I'd either be opening a hood or reaching underneath to get to it. <clears throat> because, you know, the gaps here, they're pretty tight on the bumper. You know, and I guess if you really wanted to, you could probably clock it around <clears throat> to where you get it there. But I think this is a best place that we just reach under the bumper no big deal engage and disengage so that one's engaged that's disengaged <clears throat> got the rope through the fair lead here got a disengage it pulls out really easy so let me get this set up here and uh <clears throat> excuse me set up the tripod and we'll test it out i'm gonna engage the drum and then uh, give it some juice. All right, we're engaged. You always want some tension on your rope. You never pull your rope in slack. with the hood open I can actually watch it make sure it's lining up good and what I'm gonna do here see if I can put this yep hook it right there keep a little slack on it there it is all right nice and tight I think that's gonna work uh, the feed is actually pretty quick all right, there you have it. That's one thing I love about this uh, ARB bumper. It said the winch is hidden. It's safe from getting hit. Uh, it's damn near impossible to get this winch off unless you take the bumper off because uh, the width of this winch is almost nine inches. And as you can see right here, this gap, <clears throat> excuse me, the gap between the bottom of the bumper and the radiator is only about four inches. So there's no way you can get that bump, that winch out and you can't get it out this way either so the winch is safe <clears throat> all right folks Whew, it's getting hot out here uh it says real simple installation i'm really impressed you know both with this bumper uh the arb deluxe and also with the sherpa winch uh next little video i'm gonna put together i'm gonna let out all the rope off the drum hook it up to a tree Put some tension on it and rewind it might do that a couple times get a little bit of a stretch in the rope and make sure that the rope is uh, nice and tight on the drum because uh, during shipping of course it's going to vibrate loose and whatever so we're going to do that uh, stay tuned hopefully another couple of days i'll have that video out here so you can see how this thing actually pulls